guys hope you're having a great day today all right today you're probably wondering why are you in your car amy <laughs> well let me share with you why i'm in my car because i already recorded this abundantly life a few days ago and i was outside and it was kind of windy and i'm like oh it's good over here well then i went to edit the video later that night and i was like oh my goodness you can't hear anything because of the wind and then i'm like trying to mess around with the audio settings it literally takes me a half hour to record this it won't take me that long to record it so i started messing around and it was like 15 20 minutes and still wasn't working and i'm like you know what i just need to re-record this because it's going to take me longer to try to figure it out or i can just go back out and do it so then i'm like okay it doesn't look too windy outside and so i was inside doing some um food video today and so then uh, i was like oh i'll come out and record and i started walking around i'm like it is so windy so i'm like where am I going to go? Girl's like, just do it here in your bedroom. I'm like, the kids are so loud. I cannot hear. So in my car, I remember watching Jamara one time, a few times, I think in her car doing a talk. And I was like, hmm, she's smart because her house was probably loud. <laughs> so I'm going to bring you abundantly blessed in my car here. So I'm like, that would work. Let me turn it that way. So that way it's not too bright. There we go. So we're just going to chit chat in my car because, or not chit chat, we're going to read the word of God in my car because it's just too noisy outside and you're not going to hear it. And then, and the house is so loud with kids. So Ruby's going to be disappointed. Trust me. If you could see Ruby, she's right here wagging her tail. Like, what are you doing in the car, mom? It's time to read the word of God. So we're going to start reading. So we are reading the word, um, the new, tra new translation. We are reading the new Testament right now. And we are on week 28. I had to double check because I had to do this a few times. Week 28, we're reading the book of Hebrews. We just started the book of Hebrews. I'm reading from the ESV, which is the English standard version read from whatever version you have whatever kind of Bible you have it doesn't matter if you want to read along get the Bible app it's free I think it's called Bible Hub I'm almost positive it's brown little icon or app and then you can just read you can read online for free all these good things so and if not just listen I'll just read the Word of God and we'll talk about it a little bit as we're coming up to parts that are uh, that I feel led to speak about so all right this is the letter to the Hebrews the supremacy of God's son long ago at many times and in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Isn't that pretty cool? God could literally just say something and the whole universe will fall apart. Pretty cool, huh? that much power. After making purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I, it, I will be a, to him a father and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the sun, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. I think about the thing is, God's always the same. You know, you can get the newest, latest, and greatest book on how to raise a child. You can get the newest and greatest book on how to cook better, eat healthier, whatever the newest eating habit is. All these things, it always changes, right? It always changes. Styles change. You know, home decor changes. Everything changes. But you know the only thing that doesn't change? The Word of God. It's the same. It's the same it was a thousand years ago. It's the same it was a hundred years ago. It's the same as it was yesterday and today. And that's what's pretty cool. It never changes. God's Word never needs to upgrade. That's pretty cool. And it says, and to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Oh, do you want to have your enemies be a footstool? Your feet go on top of them. That just sometimes you think that, right? Verse 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? So there's ministering spirits that go out, right? And they're going to serve for the sake for us to inherit salvation. Chapter 2, warning against neglecting salvation. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we've heard, lest we drift away from it. I have that highlighted. So, 
we need to pay attention to what we're listening to. Sometimes it's very easy to get in a rut. It's easy to get in a rut into everything in life, right? And it's easy if you don't pay attention. Sometimes you take things for granted or sometimes you let a little sin in your life and you just don't even really think about it over and over and over. And then you sometimes allow more and more. And guess what can happen? You can actually drift away from it. It says close to that, our salvation, or we can drift from it. I don't want to drift my, from my salvation. Do you? No. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord and was attested to us by those who heard, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit, distributed according to his will. Right? He distributes gifts according to his will of what it is you need for your life and what he needs you to accomplish in your life sphere of influence right the founder of salvation for it was not to angels that god subjected the world to come of which we are speaking it has been testified somewhere what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him you made him a little while lower than the angels you have crowned him with glory and honor putting everything in subjection under his feet now i'm putting everything in subjection to him he left nothing outside his control at present we do not yet see everything in subjection to him right we don't see that right now but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. Our source what we do, what we do comes from one source, the same source available to everybody, right? Through God. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. Uh, verse 14, since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. So he doesn't have to help the angels. That's not their job. They're just ministering, going out and doing what he tells them to do. But he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation. Propitation? Propitation. How do you say that? Propitation? <laughs> love it when you come to a word and you're like, what is that word? It's one of those things you never say all the time, right? For the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. He is able to help those who are being tempted. Remember that. Don't ever sit there and think that it's just too much. I can't avoid the temptation or I can't do these things. Don't put yourself in situations for one way around it. If you deal with certain things that are tempting to you, um, whether it be drugs, pornography, or worldly things you shouldn't be, if you're a woman, another man, right? Don't get so close. Don't get to the point where, or don't even get to the part where there's even any kind of temptation at all, right? Does that make sense? And it says he's able to help you who are being tempted, right? He'll say you just step away. But if you just keep going further and further and further, if you are going to go talk to another man and you start sharing things about your husband, maybe that you didn't like, you share that with another man. You start complaining about your spouse to the other person and they start doing that to you. You're already too far in deep. You don't want to do that, right? Because then you get more and more, oh yeah, you deserve this. We deserve this. We deserve this. And pretty soon they end up in separation and divorce. Not good. Okay, chapter three. Jesus is greater than Moses. I've always heard that uh, Jesus is compared. I know he's greater than Moses, but he was pretty much great like Moses. So here we're going to see. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses as much more glory as the builder of the house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house. And indeed, we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. And it says, arrest for the people of God. Wait a minute, are we going to have a rest? Does God give us rest? Or does God just shove a whole bunch of things on us and make us work like crazy for the rest of our life? 
Let's find out what he says. Verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion. Because on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years, they saw everything that God was doing for them. He kept providing for them. He kept doing things. And then what? Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go astray in their hearts. They have not known my ways, and I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Because they didn't believe, they didn't do it. They kept doing their own thing. They kept saying, it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. And they didn't trust. And it says, they shall not enter my rest. Verse 12, take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. You want to stay away from people that are not encouraging you, right? Friends, peers, that kind of, sometimes it's hard because it's your coworker, maybe a spouse, maybe it's your family and it is hard to do that, right? So, but you have to be careful. It says, take care, so be careful, watch what you're doing, right? But exhort one another every day, as long as it call, it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, for we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. We don't want to harden our hearts like the rebellion back in the old. He's talking about the Old Testament, the Israelites. And that's what we're going to say right here in verse 16. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that those would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief what happened they were not unable to enter the promised land why because of their unbelief sometimes we're waiting for things to happen in our life sometimes we're waiting for breakthroughs to happen we're waiting for God to do these things do you stop and doubt it ever do you have unbelief we don't have unbelief. Don't have unbelief in anything God tells you. Believe it no matter what you see, no matter what is going on around here in the physical, no matter what kind of symptoms you're getting, no matter what kind of um, financial problems are coming against you, no matter what's going on with relationship, you just keep trusting and believing God, right? Chapter four. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, so wait a minute, there's a promise of entering his rest. We still get to enter his rest. Hmm. Let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with who with those who listened. For we have believed enter for who for we who have believed enter that rest as he said. As I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way. So he talked about resting that day. We have to rest. God will give us rest. Don't the God doesn't just say, here, you can have, I'll give you this new path of life or this new job or all these things. And I'm just going to shove a whole bunch of stuff out of it. So you're so exhausted. You have no time to do anything else. No, we add a lot of stuff onto our life. We may do way more than God tells us to, but God doesn't add those things to us. Remember, God does give you rest. God will do. You can see, um, things that people do that sometimes it seems like, oh, that's a lot of stuff, but you have to know that if that's what God wants them to do, let God do that and God will give them the rest that they need, right? Um, let's see. Okay, so in God rest on the seventh day from all his works, verse five, and again in this passage, passage he said, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience. Again, he appoints a certain day today saying through David so long afterwards and the word, words already quoted today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts don't harden your hearts to what God's saying when God tells you something don't immediately start doubting it don't go oh, that's not for me or get all excited for it and then when you leave church you get home you forget about it for if Joshua had given them rest God would not have spoken of another day later on so then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Remember that. Nothing is hidden in God's sight. You may think that when you're on your phone by yourself at home or when you're in your bed all by yourself or when you're 
uh, at home, maybe in a closet, secret area that you don't think anybody's paying attention to, then just know that God is there. God always sees what you're doing. When you think you're sending a text to another person that's not your husband and it's inappropriate, God sees those things. You don't want to be doing things you should not be doing, right? Because God sees all things and we're going to have to give account. He says all are naked and exposed to the eyes of God, to whom we must give account. Jesus, the great high priest. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Pretty cool. All right, chapter five. Hebrews 5. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of the men in relation to God, right? To offer gifts and sacrifices for sins, right? That's what they did in the Old Testament. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he become he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. You can't just take it upon yourself. You've got to be called by God to do it. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hmm. We're going to learn about the Melchizedek next time. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Warnings against apostasy. Apostasy. Did I say that right? I think I did. Uh, above this, we have much to say, and it is hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. Ooh. We don't want to be dull of hearing. We can get so numb to things of this world that we just be dull and don't hear. We want to be having clear, sound hearing so you can hear when God's speaking to you, right? For through, by this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. <laughs> so when you have an infant and you're starting, when you're a baby, right? And you have an infant baby, you feed them milk, right? Breast milk formula. That's all they can handle. You can't just hand them a steak or a cheeseburger. They can't handle that. Then you have to feed them, right? With a bottle. And then they move up and you have to like spoon feed them, right? Like soft foods. And then they graduate and they can become you know, older and they can start doing foods by themselves. So he says, you get, no, no, no. We need to go back to like beginning principles. Like you have gone over all of these things. You need milk. We need some milk in you, not the solid food because your foundation is not firm. It says for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Right? So a lot of people, um, especially new Christians, obviously are new, they're learning, they're maturing, and they, you know, they sit there and they, um, they're learning. So they're, they're getting their milk, they're getting fed. They go to church and they sit and they, a lot of people want to get spoon fed. That's when it's not good. You don't want to be spoon fed all the time. It's okay to do that. There's a season of life to be spoon fed so you can learn and grow. But I think that a lot of day, not now, most people just want to go to church and just get spoon fed and think that's good enough. They don't want to take that meat and just go ahead and devour and eat it. They just want to be fed by the pastor and here you go. Good job. Burp them if they need to. Help them along if they need to. If they start choking, whatever. We don't want that. We don't want to be those spoon fed Christians. We don't want to be those baby Christians. We have to start there, obviously. But we want to be the ones that are eating that meat. They're going and getting that burger or, or salad or whatever if you don't eat meat. <laughs> um, it says... But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Because as you grow in your faith, you're going to be able to understand the difference between good and evil. And you're going to have discernment to know what to do. You're going to have discernment to listen to God and his voice and hear it and to know it's him. Those are all things that happen when you grow your relationship with the Lord. And it starts with reading the word of God. It starts by having a relationship. It starts by praying, spending time with God, praying and then listening have it be quiet so he can speak to you and tell you what he wants you to do. Yes, all those things. And then it won't always be an audible voice. People are like, you're going to hear an audible voice. Sometimes it's just right inside like a thought. It's in your heart. 
He just puts it in you so strong so that you just cannot shake it. And you just know, okay, this is God. He wants me to do this. Don't go in doubt. Is this God? Is this God? Is this God? Is this God? Okay, God, I'm trusting this is you. And if it's not, God will trust you. God will, God will get you a big red flag for you. And if you miss it, guess what? He'll work all things for good to those who love God, even the bad things, right? Because he'll know that that's not your heart, that you really are trying to listen and obey. But if you do it without a, a clean heart and you do it because of the selfish reasons or your own way, it's not going to work out. So you want to be keeping your heart pure so that God can just keep revealing more and more of his great things for you. Does that sound awesome? Okay. All right. I think this was the shortest we've ever done about Emily Blessed. It's like 21 minutes. It's a whole clip. I haven't even stopped the camera. <laughs> it helps to be in your car. <laughs> so good. So, all right. So we're going to um, pray and then we're going to get next week's Bible reading. It's going to be um, week 29. We're going to read chapter six through 10. Isn't that exciting? Pretty cool. And let me share with you something too, real quick. I've had some of you ask me, um, like if there, I knew of any, you know, a lot of people ask, well, what sermons do you listen to? What do you do? All these things. And I, I share with the ones that I like to listen to. And so a lot of you say, do you have like a beginner course for a new Christian? Do you have any, do you know of any resources? And I'm always like, just read God's word. Well, sometimes I just, I have to understand that's not enough for someone that's really just kind of starting out or someone that's kind of rededicating and starting out. And so I just have learned because I had one of my viewers um, start watching my ch church that I go to, um, their live stream. And then they gave their heart to the Lord a few weeks ago, which is so awesome. And so um, through that, the church has been able to connect that person to a couple online like next step courses. And I was like, I had no idea we had that. And so I was like, so I was very happy to come to find that out. I was like, all right, Lord, thank you, Lord. I'm glad that I got that. I was, you know, that's a good thing to share because a lot of you asked me and I'm like, I have no idea like what there is or what there is, but the church that I attend, it's going to be, you're going to look in the right, up a little, right below this video here in the description. It's going to be UCF is the Upward Christian Fellowship. That's the church that I attend. That's the part church that I'm active in. That's the church I belong to. Um, I do our kid, I lead our kids, um, elementary, um, gr grades and, um, all that good stuff. And I love it. I love being there. I know that's where God has me. My kids absolutely love it. And it's just a good place to be. So now if you have your own church, stay at your church <laughs> and, and grow where God has you. That's the key. But if you have no church, you know, you can always go check out our church's live stream on Sunday morning and watch that and know that I'm right there worshiping with you. And then they also, I'll put the, the link in there for the next step. It'll be something you just click on and it's all online and you can get connected that way through that. It won't be anything where obviously they're going to be bothering you or coming to visit you or anything like that. But it's something online to get you connected to some resources so that you can help grow your faith and your next steps because it's a good thing. It's so important to have that because I used to think back in the day like, oh, I don't need to go to church to have a relationship with God. I don't need that. And, and I truly did believe that for a while. And then you know what I missed out by? I missed out on the connections. I missed out on having someone like sh the iron sharpens iron. I missed out on having accountability because it was just so much easier. Just like, eh, whatever, God, or, eh. and I understand there's situations you can't always get to church. I understand that you just can't sometimes. I get all those things. I understand those things. Been there, done that many times, but I think sometimes it's so easy to make an excuse to not go and you miss out on some great things. And so I know for one, like I know that I have, um, people that, that sharpen me ones ones that keep me accountable, you know, to help me with my walk and to make sure, you know, that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do so that I can be checked. Cause it's always good to do those things because it's easy just to go, eh, it's okay. And then like just ignoring God and all those things. And so you don't want to be doing that. You want to be connected. You want to have some kind of, you know, relationships outside of just you in your home and maybe you can't have anything in your home and so I think that's why that link will be a good thing to go check out because maybe you're in a situation where you can't get to church maybe your spouse doesn't let you go to church or um, you just can't drive there or whatever the reason being maybe you have a lot of kids and it's just way too crazy for you to take all the kids to church by yourself been there I get that and so go check that out it's like a next step course you can go on there and just see to see what they've got see what God will do when you start truly walk in and living out what he has for you. So, all right, let's pray and we'll close this and then you guys can go on with the rest of your day. Ready? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this time to come together to grow in your word, Lord Jesus. Right now, I'm asking Lord Father God that if there's anybody out there, Lord Jesus, that needs to hear this, Lord Jesus, that they've heard it. If they need to change anything in their life, Lord Jesus, you put in their hearts to change those things in their life. I'm excited for what you're doing. I'm excited to hear the testimonies of what you're doing in people's lives through here, Lord Jesus. And I'm just praying for more and more revelation for myself, praying for more and more revelation for the viewers, Lord Jesus, that you will reveal to them 
more of what you have for them, Lord Jesus. Help us to grow deeper and deeper in your word so that we can just stand back and go, oh, wow, look at what God did. Look at what he did and just smile knowing that we knew you said you would do it and we can believe it. Be encouragement to others around us, Lord Jesus, to bring more and more people to your loving grace, Lord Jesus. We are so excited. In your precious name we pray. Amen. All right, so you guys go. You guys have a fantastic rest of your Saturday. Have a, this is the, I'm sorry, I'm thinking, I film a week ahead. It is Thanksgiving weekend. Hopefully you're enjoying your time with your family. Hopefully you're resting. And we are going to see you guys back on Monday. All right, you guys have a great day. Okay, bye-bye.